Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today, as always, I'm starting off with freshly washed hair and I washed it into little buns so that's why I'm taking them down and I'm going to start adding my leave-in conditioner which is the kinky curly knot today. I'm going to work it in as thoroughly as I can but I will go back and add more as I style my hair and put the twists in. Once I've worked in my leave-in conditioner, I'm going to start sectioning off my hair. This just makes it easier to style my hair. A lot of the times I put my twists in while I'm multitasking, i.e. studying or watching YouTube videos. So by sectioning it off, I'm able to kind of style my hair without having to look in the mirror every time. So you're going to notice I'm going to just part with my fingers, mostly because these back sections aren't really going to be seen. And this really helps just to cut down on the time it takes to put twists in because if you're parting and making sure every part is perfect, it's going to take way too much time and it's really not that serious. So as you can see, my arms are already getting tired. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more leave-in conditioner to that section and then I'm going to start twisting. So I'm going to split it in half. It's not perfect, but like I said, the parts really aren't going to be seen. And then I'm going to start twisting down the section. You're going to see every now and then I'm going to slow down my hand movement so that you can see that I'm using my right hand to kind of smooth down that section as I twist around. You can do this with either hand. I'm just right-handed, so when I was doing this, I found that I tend to use my right hand more. And then for the other side, as you can see, I use my right hand again. I think it's just since it's my dominant hand, that's the hand that I use. But like I said, if you're a lefty or ambidextrous, is that the word? <laughs> you can use both. The main thing is just you want to smooth down the section so that the hair is lying flat and you have less flyaways. As you can see, I also added a little bit more water because you want your hair to be slightly damp so that it'll take on the curl of the twist. Moving on to the next row, again, I'm parting with my fingers. I'm not even looking to see that if, it, if it's straight because like I said, I don't really care about these bottom sections like that. And one tip is to make sure that you stagger your twist. So one way you can do this is to like even and then odd numbers of twists. So the bottom one's two, so this top one I'm gonna do three. And what that does is allow the twist on top to cover up the part below. So like I said, if your part is not straight, it's going to cover it up anyway. And again, I'm slowing my hands down just to show you how I am smoothing out that section with my right hand. Like I said, you can do this with both hands actually because my left hand is also kind of smoothing the hair down while it's holding it in place. And you can see here how that middle twist is going to lay right on top of the part below it. So that's what you want. Sometimes I do twist my hair on dry hair. I used to do it a lot more when my hair was shorter. I would wear it in a bun for a day or two and then twist it up. That way your hair is already stretched out so your twists are longer. The only downside is you don't really have as much definition as you would have if you start off on wet hair. Even if I twist on dry hair, I still will add some moisture, but it's not going to be the same as if you started on freshly washed hair. Moving on to the next row, and with this row, I'm actually going to look in the mirror a little bit to make sure the part is at least decent because now that this is a section that's higher up, it will be seen a little bit more. But again, I'm really not taking out the comb for this because it's not that serious. <laughs> And again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to be staggering it. So the bottom row was three, and now this row is going to be four. I also work from the outside in, which helps to kind of make the sections a little bit more even, because if you just go straight across, you may end up with like a tiny twist on the end. Um, so I go from the left side to the right side and meet in the middle. And like I mentioned earlier, this just makes it easier for me to twist my hair without looking at it because I have a lot of hair and it takes a long time to put twists in. So if I'm able to multitask at least while doing the back sections of my hair, it saves me a lot of time.
Now I'm going to be taking the buns out and parting properly this top section because that part is going to be seen since it's higher up. You can part this in the beginning when I first sectioned it off, but sometimes with all my hair out, it's just a little bit overwhelming. So I may just section it off and come back to it later like I did here. And I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm starting by parting the hair. Since this is a section that will be seen, I will take out the comb or just make sure that it's a little bit more straight than the other sections. And then I will start twisting using the same technique. Like I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that your hair still is damp. Also keep in mind that my hair is low porosity, meaning water doesn't really stay on my hair. So for me, you're going to see me going back multiple times to add more water to my hair. If your hair is more on the high porosity side, you probably won't have to go back and add as much water as I do. Next, I'm going to add my Redken Extreme Anti-Snap. This is a leave-in conditioner. I use this around the top portions of my hair just because I tend to get more breakage there since there's more friction in those areas. I don't use this all over though because it doesn't really give me as much slip as my Kinky Curly Knot today. So I really only use it in the sections that do have a lot of friction. So this is the back section done. I have five rows in total. And as you can see, because I staggered them, you can't really see most of the parts. Now what I'm gonna do is wrap my hair up into a bun. And this helps to keep my twist lengthened because as you know, shrinkage is real. <laughs> and as my hair dries, my twists are gonna shrink up. So I, I tend to put it in a bun so that I can maintain some of the length. Now moving on to the top section. So I like to change up my part regularly because it helps protect your hair from breakage because it's not the same hairs that are constantly being brushed or manipulated. So I just like to give different sides of my head a break every now and then. So I'm going to switch up the part and then I'm going to start on the smaller section. Again, adding more of my Kinky Curly Knot today to the section to give it some nice slip and moisture. And I'm going to also add my Redken Anti-Snap. So this basically is to help prevent breakage as well. So that's something if you do experience a lot of breakage around your edges or like I said, around the crown of your head or anywhere really, this is a product that I would recommend. Now you're going to notice that this section on the side, I'm going to twist it into one big twist. So for me, I noticed that for some reason along the sides of my head and my temples, those hairs are really very delicate, and I noticed that if I try to do too small of twists, it tends to get tangled and just it just wasn't working out right. So now I just twist them back together in one big twist just so that it's a little bit more gentle on the section. As you can see in this front section, I am pinning back every twist once I finish it because since my curls are looser in the front, if I leave it down, the twist will just start to unravel and get puffy. So that's another tip. If you do have a looser curl pattern, you want to pin it back as soon as possible. In the back sections, I can get away with leaving it down and then twisting it all up together as one. And overall, in the front of my hair, I can get away with doing bigger twists because my curl pattern is a little bit looser in the front. So that's another tip. You kind of have to do trial and error to figure out what size twists really work for your hair. And if you have different textures throughout your hair, you might notice that in some areas you may have to do smaller twists and other areas larger twists. So for me, the back of my hair is a tighter curl pattern. So if I do if my twists are too large, it's it's gonna get frizzy really fast. I'm not gonna have great definition, but in the top of my head, if I do twists that are too small, it's not gonna come out right either. So experiment with different size twists and figure out what works best for your hair. Now moving on to the larger section, I'm gonna repeat the same thing. Moisturizing my hair with some water, adding more of my leave-in conditioner, and adding some of the Redken Anti-Snap just around the edges.
Also, a lot of people ask me what products I use when I twist. I really only use my leave-in conditioners. And I'll show you later on in the video. The reason why I'm able to do this is because I use really good conditioners. So I really don't have to go back and add a lot of butters. But figure out what works for you. If, if you want to add gel, you can add gel. If you want to use a cream or a butter, you can add that. Just for me, my hair tends to get built up very fast. So the less I use, the better. Because if I use a bunch of creams and butters and gel, I'm going to have to wash my hair a lot sooner. So for this front section, I'm going to do a flat twist. It's just something that I like doing because I like how it frames um, the front of my face. Also, it just helps because, like I said, around the edges, my hair tends to be a little bit more delicate. So by doing a flat twist, it kind of distributes the tension instead of having the tension as individual twists. In these very top sections, I tend to do smaller twists, even though I gave you guys this whole explanation on why I can do larger twists on these sections. But the reason why I do smaller is because these top sections are the sections that are going to get frizzy the fastest. So if I do smaller sections, it'll be more defined and I'm able to maintain my twist outs for longer. And I'm showing you here, this is what happens when you get lazy and just want to finish your twist. So try not to move your hands down the twist too fast because then you end up with a loose twist. And when you take your twist down to do a twist out, you're really not going to have that much definition. So like I've been saying, trial and error. If you find your twists don't come out right, look at the size of your twist. Look, look to see if maybe you're twisting too loose. Also, look to see if maybe you aren't adding enough moisture. Maybe your hair is too dry. And maybe for you, you do need to add gels or butters. And so be patient with yourself and your hair. And over time, you'll figure out what works best for you. Now that I'm finished, I'm pinning back those last few twists. I'm going to gel down my baby hairs and put my scarf on. And I always like to add water first and then my gel. Even when I put my gel on, I mix it with a little bit of water because it just gives it a softer hold and it's not so crunchy. You're also less likely to get flaking from your gel when you mix it with a little bit of water first. Although I'm putting my hair back in a bun and securing the twist down, I prefer to take the bun out while my hair is still a little bit damp. That way my hair is stretched but it's damp enough to still maintain some of the curl pattern because sometimes I notice if I let my hair fully dry in the bun, it'll be so stretched that when I do my twist out, it's kind of flat. So kind of just finding that perfect balance. So like I mentioned earlier, these are the conditioners I use. I use the Manuka Honey by Shea Moisture Deep Conditioner as well as my Tresemme Luxurious Moisture Conditioner. I use both. Maybe in a future video, I'll show you how I use it, but this is my shampoo. Stay tuned. I have some exciting things coming up about the shampoo. Next, like I mentioned, I'm just going to tie my hair down. Usually I do this at night, so then I wake up in the morning and take my bun out. This time it was the middle of the day, so I just left it on for a little bit and took my twist down. So this is a final look. This is how my twist ended up coming out. I hope you guys enjoyed my tips for creating long, moisturized, luxurious twists and kind of tailoring it to your needs as well. Thanks for watching. See you guys in my next one.